بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه الحمد لله رب العالمين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي الله سبحانه وتعالى says in the Quran يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون Now before I translate that I want everyone to ask themselves a question. Why do I have to translate this? Why do we not know what this statement means? This is something that the Khatib usually repeats or begins every khutbah with on every Jum'ah. And I will mention this later on, inshallah. O you who believe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing you and is addressing me. Have taqwa of Allah as much as you are able to. And do not die except in a state of Islam as a Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always reminding us of our purpose in life, which is to just die as a Muslim. As long as you say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna Muhammad or Rasulullah, on your deathbed, then inshallah you will enter Jannah and you will be successful. That's what the hadith says. Uh, before I carry on, uh, please everyone just scooch forward a bit because there's still some brothers standing up. Just, just shuffle forward, inshallah. Uh, and uh, make space for your brothers. يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا قيل لكم تفسحوا في المجالس فافسحوا يفسح الله لكم. So that everyone can sit down, inshallah. So Allah subhanahu wa taala is always reminding us of our purpose in life, which is just to die as a Muslim. Always remember this, because we always have to wake up every single day and remember that our purpose in existence is to die in a state of Islam on our tongues. Because sometimes. While we wake up every day, going to work, coming home from work, it's the same routine. We tend to what? We, we tend to become mindless. We, time, we tend to forget what our true purpose in life is. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already tells us in Surah Al-Dariyat, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I've not created mankind and jinkind except to worship me. Best, nothing else. Nothing else matters. Don't ever forget this. Every time you wake up, you think, uh, how can I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today? And before you go to bed, you think, did I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today as he commanded me to? Today's brief khutbah will be about Islamic knowledge and the virtues of seeking it and why it is so important to do so. And I will narrate to you a very beautiful hadith narrated by Abi Dar radiallahu anhu. And this hadith is mentioned in uh, al Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah and Sunan Abi Dawood. Where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us, من سلك طريقا يلتمس به علما. I want everyone to please pay, pay attention to these beautiful words. Your prophet, by the way, is the prophet that we all claim to follow. So he tells us something, عليه الصلاة والسلام, and we should listen very carefully. Why has he said this? من سلك طريقا يلتمس به علما سلك الله به طريقا إلى الجنة. Whoever walks on a path seeking Islamic knowledge. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the path to Jannah easy for them. Amazing. If you want an easy way to get into Jannah, begin by seeking Islamic knowledge. What? Knowledge of how to worship your Lord. And then the hadith continues to say, And indeed, the angels, they enshroud uh, with their barakah, with their mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted for them. The student of knowledge. So it's as if that when you are embarking on seeking Islamic knowledge, whatever way, shape, or form that is, be it via a book or via a lecture that you're watching or anything else, and you sit there and you study and you're writing, just know that the angels are enshrouding you in their mercy, in their barakah, in their blessings. And this is something amazing because if you have barakah in your life, then you will notice that everything in your life becomes easier. Everything in your life becomes smooth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has always got your back. Any problem you have, Allah will make it easy for you. Anything that you need to com complete in five hours, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you complete it in maybe two hours. This is what barakah is. Perhaps there will be a future talk, inshallah, about the blessings of barakah. So always remember this. The hadith continues to say, Amazing. That the scholar, the one who has spent decades studying the original religion of Islam, a true, a true scholar, 
who have spent their time, their effort, their money as well, and they have made some sacrifices to studying the religion of Islam day and night for weeks and months and years and decades, that everything in the heavens and the earth, Allah says, everything in the heavens and in the earth that you know and that you don't know, they are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive this person. Even the fish in the sea is not amazing. So next time you go to the ocean or you see a fish, just know that that fish is asking Allah in a way that we don't understand to forgive, oh Allah, forgive this scholar, that scholar, this person who has spent a long time seeking Islamic knowledge. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you, just, just know that this is the end, this is the gateway to Jannah. We know that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us that none of us will enter Jannah by our good deeds alone. Not even me, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So don't ever become too self-proud of the good that you might have done. Not even Rasulullah will enter Jannah by his good deeds alone. It is only by Allah's mercy. It is only by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and his forgiveness upon us. So the more forgiveness that Allah gives us, the more chance we have of getting into Jannah and the higher chance of us getting into a higher, a higher level of Jannah. So just know that everything, you have sins. You don't have, we all have sins, we have sins. Uh, just know that the everything in the heavens and in the earth is asking Allah to forgive you if you are a scholar who has spent time and effort and energy seeking Islamic knowledge. Even if you maybe have forgotten to say Astaghfirullah, know that the fish are saying it on your behalf and every other creature. And I would always ask myself, why does Allah mention fish? Why didn't Allah say something like a, a giraffe or you know, a lion? Why did he say fish? Because the ocean is huge. And I think over 95% of it is undiscovered yet. Think of how many fish there are in this world. Millions upon mi billions, in fact. Every single one of them asking Allah to forgive me to forgive the scholar of Islam? SubhanAllah. What a blessing, what an honor. And then the hadith continues to say, This is amazing. The honor and the rank, the degree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the scholar of the religion who has spent, as I said, a long time studying Islam, compared to the rest of the Muslims, compared to the rest of the average Muslim, is like the moon on a dark night sky, compared to the rest of the stars. Tell me when you go outside and you see the moon, and it is big and it is beautiful and it is glowing, and it is, you know, luminous. It's by far the most beautiful thing that you see, is it not? Oh, the, new, the moon looks beautiful today. No one will say, look at that star, when the moon is right in front of them, big and beautiful and huge. And imagine in the deserts of Arabia, where Rasulullah narrated this hadith. Not only that, but the moon is what guides everyone during the nighttime, is it not? Nothing else is, there is no other light besides the light, the nur of the moon that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. This is the scholar that they guide people even during the night times, even during the dark times. The scholar is there to guide people. And this is why Rasulullah in the Quran, Allah describes him as Sirajan Umira. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a Siraj, the sun, a glowing lamp and the glowing moon. So that even in 24 hours, during the night and during the day, there is always some form of guidance that is your Prophet. And the scholars are those who, but they carry on the, they carry on the message of the Prophets as the hadith continues to say. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَإِنَّ الْعُلَمَاءَ وَرَثَةُ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ And indeed the scholars are the inheritors of the Prophets, subhanAllah. We all want to follow in the path of the Prophets. Why else are we Muslim? The Prophets are the most beloved creations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are they not? Are they not? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already affirmed this. They are the most beloved and noble creations to Allah and they will enter the highest levels of Jannah. So if you want to enter a high level of Jannah, become more beloved, beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then know that you have to follow in the footsteps of the Prophets. And indeed the scholars are those who what? 
inherit the prophets, subhanAllah. Wa inna al-ulama'a la warathat al-anbiya. And then the hadith continues to say, Wa inna al-anbiya lam yuwarithu dinaran wala dirhama, walakin warathu al-ilm. Faman akhada bihi akhada bihadd bin wafir. But indeed, the prophets, they do not leave behind a dollar or a dime. They do not leave behind money. What do the prophets leave behind? They leave behind Islamic knowledge. They leave behind knowledge of how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They leave behind knowledge of how to fulfill your purpose in creation, which is simply to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and die upon a state of uh, Tawheed, upon a state of Islam. So the hadith finishes off by saying, فَمَنْ أَخَذَ بِهِ أَخَذَ بِحَظٍ وَافِرٍ Whoever takes this Islamic knowledge, whoever takes this knowledge, the, the prophets have passed down, and it is passed down. Look at how many ahadith there are, the tafsir of the Quran, everything else. They have taken, the prophet said, you have surely taken a mighty treasure. You have taken a, an amazing thing. It is the best thing that you can take hold of. When we die, we leave behind our house. Our children are going to be disputing who's going to inherit this, who's going to inherit that. The, prophet, the prophets, they don't leave behind these worldly things. Notice what they left behind. Knowledge. Who will be the one to take up this knowledge? The prophets are saying. Allah is saying. Who will be the one to take up this knowledge? My brothers and my sisters. We all claim to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anything that you love is something that you give time and effort and dedication and energy towards. Some people, they love money every day. All they care about is making more money, going to work, which is fine, obviously. I hope you'll, get, you'll understand my point. Some people, they worship dopamine. They just want to have fun. They're looking for the next thrill. You will see them jumping off cliffs and doing these strange things. Some people are just chasing, as we see, Partying and drugs and you know these kinds of fun activity they have no purpose they have no vision our purpose in life is very simple and that is to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to gain his eternal pleasure and into Jannah how can we love our Lord or follow in the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if we don't know anything about him if we do not know who he is indeed the more you know something the more you will love that thing that's what worship is. It is to give your time and energy and effort and dedication to something. And you can only do that if you know more about that thing. So if we want to be better worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again taking it back to the action point, so I can die upon a state of Islam, so that Allah can be pleased with me. Nothing else matters in this dunya. Absolutely nothing else matters. It doesn't matter how much money you have, it doesn't matter how many children you have. What matters is did you come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a pure sound heart? Is Allah pleased with you? So we want to be, we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be as pleased with us as possible. So that we can enter this Jannah which is forever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it's forever. That's it, you've made it, you're done. As soon as you die, every single thing you've ever learnt about will become a reality. The life of the barzakh. The day of judgment, Jannah, Jahannam. Are you ready? Are you prepared? The wise person, as Rasulullah is the one who prepares for this meeting. Those who remember death the most and those who prepare for it the most. They're ready for this test, they're ready for this day. And this all begins with Islamic knowledge. But even if you go to any kind of exam, and I'm sure among all of us here have done some kind of exam in their lifetime. You have to prepare for it, you have to revise for it. So we need to embark on this path of seeking Islamic knowledge. We need to learn our religion, inshallah. And those, uh, this hadith narrated just some of the virtues of seeking Islamic knowledge. Please, please do not forget them. And the second half of the khutbah, we will discuss it a bit further. My brothers and 
brothers and my sisters, I don't want to sound harsh, but I want everyone to ask themselves a question. You all know how old you are. Some of us here are as young as 5, 10, 15, 20. Some of us have hit our 30s or 40s, 50s or 60s. Some of us have hit 70 or 80. Ask yourself, how much time did I actually give to learning about the religion of Islam? Ask yourself, how much Quran do I know? We spend a lot of our lives studying things like maths, science, technology, business, economics, all these kinds of things. It is ilm, this is knowledge, and it is good knowledge if it is obviously used in a good way. Are we not shy or are we not embarrassed to perhaps say that I recite the Fatiha 17 times a day as I should be doing if I pray five times a day and I don't even know what it means? Are we not shy to reach the age of 50 or 60 and not know more than a few surahs of the Quran, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But you know every single thing about the human body, or you know every single thing about economics, or you're an amazing, an amazing mathematician. You, you can't give me a tafsir of Qulhu Ahad. You can't tell me what as samad means. This is not right. This is something that we should genuinely be shy and embarrassed of. I'm going to be totally honest. We have to go back to learning about our religion. Just like we wake up every single day and we give time during the day to go to the bathroom. We give time during the day to go to the hammam, to the toilet, or to eat, or to go to work, of course, to provide for our families. We should be giving a time to seek some kind of Islamic knowledge. Well, 10 minutes a day. We do have time. We do have time. It's about prioritization. Because many of us will sit in front of the TV for several hours after we come back from work. And I know we're tired and I know we're exhausted. Watching things which are not going to be beneficial for our purpose in life, for our akhirah. Is it not time that we give some time to learning about our faith? Learning about who our Lord is? Every single one of us here should be able to tell us, should be able to tell me something about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You should be able to tell me his life. This is your Prophet that you follow, that you claim to follow. Every single one of us here should be able to give a five minute talk to me about who is Allah. The Lord that we worship, that you're going to meet when you die. If we cannot do that, we need to really genuinely go home, look ourselves in the mirror and ask ourselves, what am I doing? Have I lost touch with my purpose in creation? My purpose of existence? So inshallah, the action point from today's khutbah is very simple. Young or old, it's never too late. Dedicate some time during your day to seeking some Islamic knowledge. Whether that is reading one new hadith, whether that is memorizing one new ayah of the Quran and reading a tafsir of it and then applying it. Whether that is watching just one Islamic lecture on YouTube every single day. Imagine you did that. 20 minutes, that's it. Just make it a consistent habit, even if it's small. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he narrated that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, uh, the most beloved deeds to Allah are those which are small but consistent. Just do something for your akhirah. Learn your Lord. Learn about your Prophet. If you truly claim to love Allah as you truly do, then the, Allah says, follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah will love you. How can you follow a man you don't know anything about? You can tell me the names of every uh, player on the football team, of your favorite football team, but you can't tell me the names of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's children. Is this correct? We should be embarrassed. We should genuinely be shy. So those are the action points from today's khutbah. Before I finish off, I'd just like to remind everyone that this masjid, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in it. And as you can see, there's a lot of you here, and there's some people who are praying outside. Uh, on this blessed night or day of Friday, the last Jum'ah in Ramadan, the night of the 27th, I believe, I believe, give, I know you have given a lot, and I know you always get asked to give in Sadaqah and charity, but Wallahi, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ma naqasat sadaqatun min mal, charity will never ever decrease in your wealth, Wallahi, it will always come back, multiplied, 
من ذا الذي يقرض الله قرضا حسنا فيضاعفه له who will give Allah a goodly loan so he may multiply it back to you Allah is saying who wants to do business with me well businessmen here Allah is saying do business with me give me a bit I will give you much more so please on your way out today don't feel don't let shaitan feel like make you feel like you're going to be poor give something to help him expand this masjid as I said there's brothers who are praying outside this is your community this is your masjid this is your home this is where Islamic knowledge is taught and you will get hasanat, good deeds for every single piece of goodness that has been spread in this masjid if you support it. So please do give something on your way out, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Ibadullah. Inna Allah. Ibadullah. Inna Allah. Ya'murukum bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dil qurba wa yanha'an il fahsha'i wal munkari wal baghi ya'ibukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon Remember Allah and He will remember you. And be grateful to Allah. Gratitude, by the way, is not in just saying Alhamdulillah after you finish eating. It is to do more in terms of the ibad, in terms of actions. It is to implement Islam. Before I say Aqimu Salat, just three more small things. It is Jum'ah today. Do not forget to send abundant salawat upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For indeed, this is the best thing that we can be saying on this blessed day. Number two, there is an hour which the ulama or Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks of on a Friday. But if you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is accepted. This is Sa'at al-Istijada. And there's many opinions on it, but one of the strongest is the hour before Maghrib. So utilize this hour to just take 10 minutes out and make dua to Allah from the bottom of your heart for your brothers and sisters in Palestine who are being persecuted and oppressed. It is our duty and the least thing we can do is to simply ask Allah to aid them and assist them and grant victory over the oppressors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them victory. And the final thing I will say is as I said, Friday is the best day to give in charity. So give something in charity towards this masjid, inshaAllah. Aqeem as